Behold, bless the name of the Lord. All right, turn with me in your Bibles, amen, to Isaiah chapter 63. We won't be before us too long here today. Amen. We are here for such a great opportunity to be reminded of God's faithfulness to us. And uh, if you're like me, 2010 started with the hope you can believe in, you know. A lot of us was high on, you know, uh, seeming like a, a page was turning in our national political scene, you know, we seemed like the economy was starting to bounce back and some of us who, uh, you know, was, was, was newly married, you know, or thinking of getting married or just stop being married, amen. <laughs> <laughs> a new decade was representing a new time. Mm -hmm. But it is fascinating how uh, at the end of a season of time, whether it is this year or a decade, we always have an opportunity to do one of two things. We can uh, sit in a place of deep reflection and stay in the, the, the kind of challenges and, and gaps that all of us as human beings will experience and, and kind of just, just, just sit there in a sulk and look in the rearview mirror and think about the things that were left undone, the hurts, the pains. Or we can turn our attention to this new opportunity of a future and a, and, and, and a time that is not yet written and, and say, you know, I'm going to chalk up everything I've learned to help catapult me into what I need to know for me to be better, do better <clears throat> in this season to come. Uh, I am one who likes to live in the middle of that spectrum, if you will, that if we take seriously this principle called Sankofa, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, um, man, I wish I had the picture up, but it, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, kind of African um, kind of uh, philosophical framework of, of the importance of being able to look back. So it's like a bird with its head kind of turned to the side, but it's actually supposed to be you kind of looking back um, with this sense, though, that we have to also keep moving forward. <clears throat> but sometimes you have to look backward in order to kind of see where you come from because quiet as it's kept the world will make you think you ain't been nowhere oh, you know, you're just stuck in the mud but the truth is god has brought us from a mighty yeah. long way yeah. so isaiah 63 is a is a interesting passage because it is certainly one of these passages written by a company of prophets trying to remind the children of Israel as they come out of exile about the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, particularly when they feel like they have been forsaken. Things didn't happen the way it was prophesied to happen. And so they kind of feel like, man, I feel let down what happened right here. And so Isaiah 63, I think, is a wonderful passage. It's our lectionary passage. And so when I read it a few weeks ago, I was trying to contemplate, was I going to stay out and let these wonderful ministers hold it down while I was trying to recover and take care of some family stuff? And, and I just felt compelled. I wanted to come and just offer this passage and lead us through an exercise of remembering. Then I may go back into a little bit of a hole and let them have it for a few more weeks. Um, but uh, I love this passage, and I pray that it blesses you. Uh, it's on the screen. Uh, why don't we read it together, if you don't mind? I don't know if you can see that. Some of you that got good eyes. If not, just move your mouth quietly and let the, per <laughs> let the person next to you be your voice. But all together, let's read verse number seven. Together, I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord. Because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown according to his mercy, according 
to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of their life. And the word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. And we're going to talk for a few moments about keeping count keeping count of all the good things, the great things that God has done for us. God, we thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. May we hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you and let the anointing and power of God rest upon me and even the hearers of your word will say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Tell your neighbor, keep count. Keep count. Be a good counter. Keep count. Keep count. Uh, now, um, you know, we started this year off with a theme called Ignite Team. We were talking about how we wanted to ignite growth and we wanted to ignite gifts. We wanted to allow the spirit to have all kinds of room within us and around us and even through us to bring alive some things that for whatever reason, it could be life, it could be struggles, it could be challenges, it could be our own self-doubt, it could be pain and trauma, disappointment, fear. Uh, we allowed many things to be buried. We allowed many things to be erased. We allowed ourselves to be muted, to be marginalized. And re we, what we did not know is that in that process, we have robbed the world of the necessary gifts that God has uniquely placed in our hands to make alive. But the other impact of that is we've also stunted our own growth. Because quiet as it's kept, uh, your growth happens through your doing. And as much as I am one of these folk who uh, I'm always trying to, uh, you know, channel all of my energy in healthy ways. I'm also uh, clear that the kind of growth that I want to see in my life, in my family, in my uh, ministry, in my own self-growth and healing, it requires some doing. It doesn't require doing all the time, but it does require some doing that, as a matter of fact, what I don't do may actually be that which keeps me atrophied. You know, when I was, you know, trying to get back in shape, and I'm going to try again in 2020, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was always, you know, in my mind, working out. <laughs> you know I mean, boy. If folks can see what's happening in my mind, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, it's Mr. Olympus up in there, amen. It's, it's eight packs, it's twenty-four inch biceps, it's 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 my it, it's a it's it's a lot going on in my mind, and and so when 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 uh, and I even you know bought all these body weights and an elliptical and it all sits in my room right down the hall from my bedroom, meaning, you know, there's an excuse I gave myself. You know, oh, it's just so much to, to get up and go to the gym. So I'll just, I'll just make a shortcut. I'll get my weights and my body resistance strings and, and my elliptical machine, and I'll just put it right there in my office. And now it's a, that serves as a, a, a hanger for my clothes. My weights are my my little paper weights to make sure that when the wind blows, my notes don't fly, except for in my mind. In my mind, I'm doing it all. I wake up every day at 6.01, and I get in there, and I work it out because I know that in order for me to be in shape, I have to do something. I want you to appreciate that 
there is indeed a lot of doing that is required to keep you and I on track in this current age we're living in. Uh, you and I have to be intentional, intentional about keeping a good count of what God has done for us. In a world that would want to make you and I think God has forsaken us, I want you to know that God has not forgotten about any of us. None of us are forgotten, abandoned. All those, keep it real, in the last year, in the last decade, how many of you felt at times like God kind of was tripping? Like, God, where are you at? Hey, Amen. It's all right. This is a real church. This ain't one of them fake ones going to throw you out because you're telling the truth. Hey. Amen. I felt like that a lot. I felt like that in the last few weeks. Hey, Amen. Like, God, I did all this stuff you told me to do. Fasted, prayed, paid my tithes, tried to love everybody, forg forgave those folk that, you know, deserve forgiveness, pray God, you know, and <laughs> I still got hell coming at me every which way. And one thing God told me in some of my prayer and thinking is that maybe I need to go back to a practice of counting my blessings. Amen. Amen. They used to sing a song that count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. Count, count, count your blessings. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Why must we count our blessings rather than just allow them to just sit in the kind of esoteric background of our minds? Because if we don't keep a good count, we will lose count. And in the losing count of our blessings, we, we will be at risk of amnesia. And there's nothing worse than forgetting the good things God has done for you, God has promised to do with you and through you, and certainly God has started in us. When we come to this text, it's a text that I find to be quite important because as we wind this year down, I do see the text asking you and I to do some practices, participate in practices that help us stay grounded in what God is up to. Now, what God is up to is often, just like the Sankofa bird, often grounded or emerging from what God has done. When God says, I'm going to do a new thing, the irony of that statement is the new thing springs forth from the old thing. And so for many of us, all the new beginnings we want, I, I, I always like a new beginning, but the reality is your new beginning will always emerge from your current space. It will be, what will I do to ensure that this new season is radically different than the one I am currently in or am coming out of? And the great promise of the new thing, of this new season, is that the same God that was with you in your trying times will not be absent as you get into your new season. It's not as if you don't get a new God. And he ain't going to even get a new you. Amen. You know, many of us want new us. It's like, I don't want this. I want something different. But God says, you are the greatest gift that I've given you. Yourself. Pap Chef on chest say, I am my greatest gift. And so you being your greatest gift, now it's a question, Lord, how do I, how do we ensure that this new season allows us to be mindful of where God has brought us from? So several things I want to leave with you as we prepare to, to, to move from this, this current year and decade into a new one. The first one is keep a good list. Everybody say keep a good list. Uh, one thing God has done is ignited a list. First, number one, I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord because of all that the Lord has done for us. If you're like me, uh, a list is an important tool because I used to have a photographic memory. I used to be able to remember phone numbers and 
And, you know, uh, my wife would send me to the store, and I didn't have to write nothing down. She'd be like, I want these ten things. And, you know, if you go into the store for other folks, they real picky, you know, because I like generic things, you know. It's like, what's the Safeway brand? What's the Walgreens brand? What's the CVS brand? Some folk like Heinz ketchup, you know, and I'd be like, what's the difference? Although I got Trader Joe's ketchup the other day, and it had this deep magenta kind of look to it. <laughs> I said to myself, hmm, where's the Heinz at, praise God. <laughs> like, what's going on with this ketchup? You're like, this channel is something else up in here. But the point is, is that uh, the list, I, I had to start making lists the more my mind got cluttered with, you know, other tasks, with age, with other concerns. Uh, I couldn't remember things, and so, you know, I get to the store, and when I didn't have my list written out, I would get halfway through my list that I thought I remembered, and end up at the counter, and I got six things in my basket, and I know I had ten, and I had to call my wife and be like, hey, Sharice, what did what, you ask me to get again? And, she would, of course, have her list. Oh, I'll give you my list. I don't want your list. I'm cool, you know, it's in my mind. But I remember that there are times in our lives that if we don't keep a good list, ignite a list in our mind of God's faithfulness to us, you and I will think that the challenges that are cyclical in our lives are new. And that we have to start over and over again generating faith for that which God has already demonstrated God's ability to bring us out of. It is indeed the case, child of God, that a list is, 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 is a blessing because it allows you to keep your heart and your mind and your soul and your spirit connected to the activity of God in your life and in the world. And a historical person without a list is someone who is easily tossed by the winds of controversy and challenge. But you and I who have a good memory of God brought us out before and because he did it last year or three years ago or 10 years ago, then I'm looking through to 2020 with an expectation that the same God who brought me out last time will bring me out in the year to come. Do I have a witness in here that can say, I, I, I got a little Sankofa thing going on up in here, amen. I, 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 I can't tell for sure what's going to happen in 2020, but I know this for a fact. I got a good list of what God did for me in the past. Woo, and if this God is going to go with me into the future, then I know everything will be all right. I mean, think about the ways in which God was faithful to us. Man, think of where you were in 2010. Think of who you was hanging out with in 2012. Think of the job you lost in 2014. Think of how your heart was ripped to shreds in 2015. Think of how you thought about things before Ferguson happened, praise God. Man, some of us found out we was black at Ferguson, amen. Some of us found out we was the other. We found out we was a problem. Some of us found out this country was wicked. Some of us found out all kind of things in 2015, and now you can't unsee what you saw. So you got to keep a list of that. I don't know if any of you keep a journal, amen. And you look at your journal. You know, I was going through some old sermons. I was trying to, you know, one of the things I was trying to do in the sabbatical, start writing a, my book, you know. And someone said, just pull some of your old sermons out from 20, uh, 2005 and 6 and 7 and 8. And I started pulling them sermons out, and I put them sermons neatly back into the folder. Because <laughs> who I was 10 years ago is not who I am today. Lord, I feel like preaching in here today. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him who I was yesterday ain't who I am today. And you better thank God. Amen. Some of you like, you met me on the comeuppance, praise God. Because, you know, when I, was, when, I was in, when I was down there in the gutter, amen, you didn't want to see who I was. Uh, Wayne back there laughing, amen. Amen. The scripture says, from the utmost, Jesus saves. Amen. He will pick you up and he will turn you around. 
Woo! And you got to know and remember. Because the worst thing that happens to some of us is we forget. And then we get bougie. We get bougie in our faith. We get bougie in our politics. We get bougie in our family dynamics. Our nose turns up. And we, we, we think our stuff don't think because we ain't kept a good list. Mm -hmm. Of how you acted when you didn't have your stuff together. How you acted when, you know, you had just got your heart broke. How you acted when your boo walked out on you. How you acted when you puff, puff past a few too many times. And you, you start forgetting. Then you see other folk acting the way you used to act. I can't believe. Because <laughs> you ain't kept a good list. But I believe somebody in here got a list of what God has done. And, and, and you can recount your list and say, if it had not been for the Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Everything I learned in 2019 and 2018 and 17 and 16 and 15, I'm going to write it down. So I can have a living, breathing testimony. Amen. The folk I voted for a few decades ago, a few years ago, I'd never vote for them again. The protests I went to, I'd never go to again. Amen. The folk I used to rock with and party with and, and go out with and sit next to in church, I won't do it again. Some of y'all, amen. God has brought me from a mighty long way. So, so one of the things I want to ask, do you have a top 10 list? It's just a good little thing for you. Develop a top 10 list. We're going to do a little bit of that today. Not 10 things, but one or two things. A top 10 list of the gracious deeds that God has done for you. That God has brought you out of. What are the top 10 things? If you took a moment and said, I'm just going to reflect. I'm just going to reflect on what God has done. If you kind of like me, you know, you, you get the rock in. Your eyes will start filling up with some tears. Hallelujah. You, 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 you'll, start to, you'll start to feel a little like, 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 like grateful. Because you begin to realize that God, my life may not be what I want it to be 100%. Woo, but I got some things that I am grateful for. Hallelujah. Keep a list. Keep a list. Second thing that I think the scripture lists up for you and I is that it ignited becoming. You know, Michelle Obama wrote a book called Becoming. And I think she stole it from the scripture. Amen. <laughs> Verse number eight. For God says, surely they are my people. And God became their savior in all of their distress. I love this scripture because it starts out with God's declaration that we belong to him. No matter what you have gone through or what you will go through, remind yourself constantly of the ways God affirms that you belong to him. It is God's pleasure to take good care of us. It is God's pleasure to declare, you are mine. And in the declaring of God saying, you are mine, I love how the passage then transitions to say, and then God became our Savior. Think about that. God became our savior. In all of our distresses, God became our savior. When you were depressed, God became your peace. When you were sick, God became your healer. When you were isolated, God became your 
company. When your relationships were broken, God became your reconciler. You ought to write a list down and just say, this is what God became for me. Many of us who've grown up in the church, you know, and we, 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 we outgrow faith because the God we were preached about was too small. And so just like you outgrow a pair of shoes or some clothes, you outgrew your faith. And one of the things, whether you stay in church or leave church, the longer you live, the more you rediscover how God becomes what you need God to be in all your distress. God welcomed our doubt in 2019. God welcomed your disappointments. God was not threatened by your questions because it was only through your doubt, disappointment, and questions could God become your savior. I mean, who needs to be saved unless you are at risk of dying? It's kind of like, what's the point of having a lifeguard out there at the pool? The lifeguard ain't jumping in the water to swim unless there is a threat. And for many of us, we don't try some of the most, the most uh, uh, risky uh, things uh, related to your divine purpose because we don't believe anybody will be there to catch you. And so I believe sometimes we settle for the status quo because we have become functionally agnostic. Like, I don't, you know, I, I have bought into this American secular story that we are all on our own. It's the power of the market. That is God in America. It's because some of us ain't got no money, then I'm just going to just settle for my little pennies. But I'm one of these folk who believe that God can become my God today. Young folk who, you know, as young people, we, we, I'm 44, so I'm not as young as I used to be, but I remember, you know, when, when, when I, I didn't believe I could, what, when I believed I could do anything. Amen. You know, when people told me what I couldn't do, I'd be like, okay, thank you. Because cause your, your disbelief in me is my direction, you know. And I had, Lord, where, which way should I go? You'll never do that. Okay, thank you. This is the way I should go. <laughs> now, getting a little older, I, I pray a lot longer, like, okay, God. <laughs> so, you know. Not as young as I used to be. I ain't picking up that mountain, carrying that joint down the street no more. Hey Amen. I need a, I need a, 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 a tunnel digger or something, a, a tractor. But I have learned over a life of following Jesus that I trust and believe God will become whatever I need God to be more than I trust that God will abandon me. So I, I, you know, I cry, I have lots of anxiety at times, but I know that if I keep doing the practices of my faith, God will become my savior. And my prayer for you as a pastor that our church is that we can help toughen your resolve and your faith that God will become whatever you need God to be. It may not happen tomorrow, but as long as you keep on living. Anywhere I ever sat with, you know, 30, 40-year-old Christian mothers, you know, like they've been saved longer than they've been born. Amen. <laughs> like they've been following Jesus like 70 years, and they like 75, and they're just like, and they just talk different. You start talking to them, and it's like, like they can drift off, and they can peel back the time-space continuum, and they can see things. I talk to folk like that. We got a couple in this church right now, amen. I sat with them. They can cook too, somebody say amen. It always helps. <laughs> it's a blessing to walk long with God. What Pastor Erna calls it a long obedience in the same direction. It's a blessing to walk with folk who have maintained that long obedience in the same direction. 
Oh, last thing, because I, I want us to have time to do our exercise. It ignited God's presence. You know, when the scripture says that it was not a messenger or an angel that God sent to deliver, to redeem, to sustain, or to carry us, but it was God himself. It is a very special gift to be able to be conscious of God's presence. And there are many practices that help attune our senses to the presence of God. One of the reasons why we come to church, of course, is because it helps us to participate in some of those practices. You know, praise and worship is not just something we do for the first 20, 30 minutes of service as just a routine. It is intended to help awaken a part of you that otherwise would stay dormant. Amen. You know, some of us, you know, like jazz, we like classical music, we like rock and roll, I guess, alternative, <laughs> hip hop, I guess, R&B. You know, I'm one of them woo, woo, woo. I like the old crooning, you know, but then, you know, some of the stuff's so harsh, it just make, it make, Lord. <laughs> but you know, whatever you like, art, what, how many of you know the art opens up a part of you? Like it, it unlocks something. You you don't you didn't even know it was in there. Endorphins, peace, you know, imagination. If these kinds of human productions can unlock parts of you that you did not even know were there, imagine what God's presence does. The, the, the eternal presence of the divine. Something that you cannot domesticate, control. Something that you cannot, you know, uh, manufacture. I'm talking about the Ruach. You know, that, was that, that presence that was there at the beginning of time. That blew on nothing and stuff started to emerge. The presence of God. God's presence being active in our lives unlocks part of us that otherwise would stay dormant. And I want you to keep count of the ways God's presence has redeemed you this year, has sustained you this decade, has carried and healed. Don't mean that you haven't had any struggles or trials, but it does mean that God didn't send a proxy I am not the one, Pastor Erna, Minister Wayne, Cherise, uh, who else we got, Pastor Nisha, all of us up here to be trying to serve and be good spiritual and faith leaders and pastoral. We're not the ones who come to save you, sustain you, redeem you. Amen. If you're dependent on us, you in trouble. I want you to understand what I'm saying now. We here to remind you to train you, to coach you, that there is a power beyond your power. There is a force beyond what you see. There is some strength and there is some anointing and there is, 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 is some, some stuff out there that if you allow it to have space in your life, when you are falling, it'll catch you. When you are breaking, it'll hold you together. When you are feeling inadequate, it'll fill you up. So you know you'll have enough to make it. This spirit is the spirit of our ancestors. It is the spirit of creation. It is eternal. It outlasts. The bad politics, it outlasts the great years of, 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 of thriving. It, it, it is utterly consistent, and it is ours.
keep count of the ways this presence is at work in our lives. Stand with us, everyone. I, uh, well, don't stand. Get, get your notepads. That's going to be our, alter, our, our, our response today. You, you should have some post-it notes. And... I'd love for you to start thinking about your top 10 list. The ways God has become your savior. The way God has reminded you of God's faithfulness. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are.
please keep coming if you haven't came yet, but we're going to that it will serve as a reminder, God, that your cross paid it all and that it laid a foundation for both the past, the present, and the future. So, God, we ask you, Lord, close, bring closure to everything that need not be carried into 2020. Whatever lesson we learned, God, may the lesson spring forth, but may the pain, resentment, may it stay in the past. We thank you for the triumphs, God, for the mountains that we climbed, the victories we won. May they bring confidence, both in you and in us, that you can keep causing us to experience this in the years to come. We thank you for the salvation, for you becoming our Savior. Bless my brother, my sister, my loved one who I'm touching. And may they always keep a good count of all of the ways you've shown up. And we'll say thank you, God. In all of these things, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Hope two or three people and tell them, I love you with the love of the Lord. Tell them that. I love you with the love of the Lord. My hiding place. Say.